Well, hi, y'all. This is Mark Boyle. I'm the prepper guy, and uh, I'm at home in my office. And recently, we painted that wall behind us. It's an accent color we've used throughout the house, and I'm thinking to myself, self, that's green. I wonder if that will be like a green screen. So I thought I would check it out and do a video. Uh, I guess if it doesn't work, you won't see a green screen back there. You will see a green wall. Uh, otherwise, I might put, I don't know, New York, Washington, some bullshit thing behind me like they do in the news. So I wanted to do uh, a quick therapy report uh, podcast. And, and I wanted to talk a little bit about... Um, Taking the high road, and where does the high road lead? And, it, and it's an interesting question, um, because I hear that all the time from the, the fake news and the fake pundits and even a lot of the fake conservative people that you know are in our lives telling us how we should and shouldn't fucking think. And, and, and so um, today I was posting a, a, a short um, preview or I guess it was like a commercial in my featured uh, posts on PrepperGuy.com. If you haven't been there, go check it out, PrepperGuy.com. And it's about um, the the standoff uh, uh, in Bunkerville with the with the Bundys. I, I think it's Clive and Bundy, how you pronounce it properly. And uh, so I was, I was writing a post to share that on Facebook because it's hard to post and share a lot of things on Facebook nowadays, but I found that if I take a video, say, from Brighteon or some group that the overlords at Facebook think are, is heinous, um, if I put it on my website and then change the wording a little bit and post it back on Facebook, it lets me because I haven't been deemed a, you know, a, a conservative leper to the media yet and Facebook so I was, I was looking at that, and I was, I was thinking, you know, Cal, Clive and Bundy kind of took the high road in his fight for freedom and liberty. And he, and he didn't, you know, piss off a lot of people by doing things that were wrong. But he definitely stood his ground and took the high road and said, no, you're not going to do this. Now, you'd have to, you know, read up on what happened at the standoff there at Bunkerville and with the, the Bundy Ranch. And it, and it is quite interesting. I always find it great to watch these things unfold in, in American history right before our eyes because eventually it will become history. Um, but this happened years ago and we were all kind of alive. A lot of younger listeners might not remember, you know, exactly because they were younger. But... Uh, this is current events. I mean, we can read about the Whiskey Rebellion, you know, in the 1700s after the country was founded and what George Washington and them guys did to deal with, I guess, whatever the Whiskey Rebellion was. It must have been over whiskey. Fucking don't know. Um, but this happened currently. You can Google that shit and read about it and watch some videos on it and you can get the book. I don't make anything off of promoting his book. I'm just a, a, a great supporter in people standing up and fighting for their rights and, and not getting too fucking shot. So he managed to find the high road. And, you know, we're, we're told today, <clears throat> you know, even with this November 6th thing that happened in Washington, you know, and all the, ooh, it was terrible. It was the worst thing that ever happened in history. Our capital was under siege. You know, they forget to tell you that there's been bombs that have been blown up in there, probably by the fucking weather underground. And people like that. But they don't talk about it because it was probably Democrats pissed off at Republicans. But the, th the thing is, we have a right to a, a redress of grievances in America. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a constitutional right. Was it granted to us by the government? And now they can say, well, you, you don't have that right anymore. And, and that was what the founding fathers' big thing were with even writing the Bill of Rights was um, 
a lot of them said no. We, you know, if you write down 10 or 20 or 30, then a corrupt government down the road will sit there and go, well, they have those 30, but do they have this 31? And, and by saying they acknowledge that it's a right, then the government that was created during the ratification of the Constitution, that's when the federal government was born. You know, we were the parents, the states. So it was born, you know, uh, during the ratification process. Um, you know, and, and they thought, well, then, you know, how many rights have we not thought of? You know, I mean, we can think of a thousand there may be a thousand and one. And I talked about that in one of my podcasts. Like, do I have the right to paint that wall fucking green? Well, of course I do. See, it, you don't even need to talk about it. Do I have the right to wear a blue t-shirt? Of course I do. You know, but there's a, there's a million rights that we don't think of that we have and should retain always. You know, and, and so the they got around the issue of the Bill of Rights by instead of calling them rights, basically, it's what Obama said was a charter of negative liberties. And, uh, you know, if you, if, you, if you read it the way Obama said it, then, you know, it could sound a little bit convoluted in a court of law. But the reality is that was a list of things that the federal government cannot do to you. They fucking cannot take away your freedom of speech or your right to assemble or worship, you know, your right to bear arms. Um, you do not have to testify against yourself. So, the, so when the government, you know, nowadays says, well, you know, we're going to write a gun control law that, that says this, that, and the other thing. I got paint on my shirt. Um, that, that falls into the realm of a law that they cannot write. They just fucking can't. And, and so instead of saying we have the right to own a gun and bear arms, then the government could say, well, we gave you that right. See, here, read this in the Bill of Rights. So they flipped it and said, no, um, you cannot do this. You're a federal government and you cannot infringe upon their rights. Now, can states? Well, yes, yeah, states are independent, sovereign countries. And they were treated as such in the Constitution. And then we had the Enabling Acts that came along and took the land that America had bought, like the Louisiana Purchase, and Mexico, and all these things that we purchased. We bought them from England. So in case there's any of you out there thinking that we stole this land from the Native Americans... No, England and France and Spain did that hundreds of years ago before we got here. And then we, being wise investors, bought it. And then we tried to clean up the neighborhood and the housing projects that England had built, basically. And, uh, and a lot of the tenants on our property that we bought um, didn't want to play by the rules. So that's the, anyway, I digress. So the enabling acts created states out of that land. So the federal government said, well, we're going to chop off this part. And that's yours. That's the state of fill in the blank. Well, in Nevada, the enabling act is quite easy to read. It's, it's two pages of big print, double spaced. I mean, it's like something I would have wrote in high school like, you need five pages. They didn't say how many, how big the words could be. Can I double space? Sure. So it's pretty easy to read, even for folks like me. And you, maybe, unless you're really good at legal shit. Um, and it basically says that the federal government establishes Nevada. And here's the boundaries. And it's a lot of, you know, survey speak and shit that laid out the yard for which Nevada could now live and 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 it was an enabling act because to join the statehood conventions you had to have certain amounts of people that spoke english that the education level was so high you had control of you know diseases and stuff back then and everything was kind of laid out and said well we'll we'll grant you this statehood if you do these things and then the states would turn around or the the, the wannabe states would say we've done this and then you would file 
for statehood. And then there was debates in Washington and everyone got together and went, yeah, why not? I need a new neighborhood. You know, Nevada sounds cool. And so it, that's briefly and cartoonishly how it was set up. But the reality was it was that simple. And, and if you read it, it says, here's your state. The federal government gets to retain a small percentage of that, that land, the dirt, for federal buildings and, and courthouses and, and certain things. Every, the rest of it's yours. And you can uh, you know, sell the land that wasn't part of somebody else's land before it became a state because they recognized that there were people that lived on this land and had been ranching it for hundreds of years before, <laughs> fucking, what's his name? Uh, you know, uh, Thomas Jefferson bought it, you know, Louisiana Purchase and stuff. So that was, it was considered, you know, it's like, that's your land. But of the state that's not owned by anybody or grazed or taken, you know, whatever, you know, there were ways to own land even back then, you know, just by virtue of being there a long time. And they said, it's yours. But of that million acres, the rest of it that's not owned or not delegated to the federal government is to be used by the state to raise money in logging, mining, oil exploration, gold, whatever, was for the state to make money to pay, for, pay its bills, to build schools, to do this shit. So... Um, when the federal government came along to the Bundys and said, hey, dude, you're not paying your grazing rights or land or rent, basically. The Bundys said, no, we've, we've been here long before this was even a state. Read the Enabling Act. And, and most people did not read the Enabling Act because they're not as pathetically boring as I am. And I read it, and it's, he was right. That land was his. They might have come along and said, we've commandeered it, and now it falls under BLM and you need to pay us rent. <laughs> and no, it's not how it worked. It's not how it worked in the federal government that was created in 1776, or actually 1789, I think, but whatever. And, and uh, nor the Enabling Act. So the federal government was in breach of the Enabling Act, and Bundy was there to tell him, uh, well, I'm right, you're wrong. Go away, take your toys, and get the fuck out of here. And so he, he fought that fight, and he won. It took years of court battles. And then when he kept losing in court because courts are fixed, you know, it's not always just depressed people that get screwed over by the court system. See, even white ranchers get fucked over by the court system. Um, then he, he, he took it to the people and he, he basically uh, put up barricades and, and had standoffs with these BLM agents that were taking his cattle and killing them for, Apparently, no reason. Maybe I mean, you know, if they were if they were seizing his his cows for rent, then why would they just kill them and pile them up in a pile and let them rot? You know, that's that's oppressive. That's not you know selling them to make money to pay his alleged rent, grazing rights. No, they were just sitting there going, well, you know, here, here we'll, we'll kill your fucking cows. How about that? You know, I'm going to take your lunch money. Why? Because I'm bigger than you. Not that you owe it to me. Because we had a deal, you know, last week um, that you were going to buy my lunch for a week. No, I'm taking it because I don't like you. So it's it's a great book, and it and it and and what the Bundys did, and and, and to an extent, um, Finnegan tried to help the Hammond family with their same type of effort, you know. But it got out of hand because all of the so-called patriot groups that were going to stand and, and help defend LaVoy Finnegan uh, tucked tail and ran, in my opinion. And a lot of people will get pissed about that. But, oh, well, you know, I piss off QAnon plenty. So these patriot groups that say they're patriot groups, um, they usually back down and run instead of taking the high ground. And they do it because they don't want to not be that kind of people. Uh, you know, I don't know what kind of people those are, but, you know, and, and I've said for years there's ways to fight the government, and the Bundy example was one of them. That was how everybody you know, should fight the government. 
So to, to discuss the high road, we need to get out our map and find out where that high road actually is. And uh, I think we're already on it as Americans and as patriots. We're, we're complaining about maybe, let's just say, voter fraud right now in this mail-in voter election. For us to not express our anger or to, to peacefully protest and get a redress of our grievances in Washington at the Capitol on November 6th is the high ground. It is the high road. We have the moral high ground and the high road that we are on to complain. And yet the media and their, their abundancy of just ability to twist the truth and say the sky is actually green and you're too stupid to fucking know it is, is astounding. So I think we're on the high road and always have been. And, and, and by being, I guess, on the high road morally, then that gives us the high ground, which is a more of a military term. But um, we did nothing wrong on November 6th at the Capitol. A few actors went and went crazy and did some shit. But regardless, that was, you know, that was not stepping off of the, of the high road, you know, even for those people that were probably paid actors to do that shit, to create a a small false flag type of event. And and I, I think, you know, that's how I feel about it. Now, I could be wrong and I so don't give a shit. But think about it. You know, we were protesting. It was a redress of issues. We were pissed. Now, according to the, the Democrats in the news, what happened in Portland and all these riots that happened and raged on for months in America those people were justified, peaceful protests. They had the high road. Well, then, so did we. I don't want to get into semantics and all that because I think what they did in Portland was wrong, a lot of it, because the people that ended up getting affected were innocents. You know, not, not people that... So what they, what they did in Portland was wrong because it affected people that had nothing to do with it, business owners, neighbors, neighborhoods, innocent people that got hurt. I mean, literally got violently hurt um, that had nothing to do with it. If they would have been, uh, you know, flipping out and hurting politicians and stuff, then, then you know, that might have been something else to discuss. But, you know, when you say you're on the high ground or the high road and you're hurting people that actually agree with you, just because they happen to be in your way or the wrong color does not give you the moral right or the high ground or the high road, however you want to pronounce it. So I think as patriots, being upset and not violent people that are burning down neighborhoods but just went to Washington and said, wait a tick, what the fuck? There is proof of voter fraud through many elections, not this one. And for us to stand up and go, hey, we want a recount of certain states is not above the fray. Um, because there were so many weird anomalies. You know, I, I, I was listening to a video the other day when they were saying, well, in Arizona, 101% uh, of the voters were counted. Okay, you can only count 100% of the apples in the cart. You can't count 101% because there, there shouldn't be 1%. And 1% of Arizona's population is a crap ton, a couple hundred thousand people, just that 1% over people that actually fucking live here and are registered voters. So... You know, they, they keep saying that, but they nobody in these videos brings up the fact that it's like, historically, Arizona's never had an election where 100% of the people showed up to vote. And it's 50, 60. I think Obama got close to 80% of America's, you know, voters to vote. And that was like high. That was very high. That was record-breaking back then. So let's just take 75%. 
is all 50 states average. Most of the states that are in contention are 110% of the vote, 125%, Arizona 101%. So not only is it that 1%, but it's the other 25% that are very questionable mathematically. So we just said, oh, wait a tick, you know, what the fuck? And we were basically crucified, hammered, laughed at, mistreated, told we're stupid. Go sit down in the corner and shut up. Put on your dunce hat. Fucking shut up. And, and so we had a right to do that. And by being pissed off about it and protesting at the Capitol was the high ground. We have the high ground. Anytime we're trying to protect freedom and liberty, in my opinion, we have the high ground. We are on the high road up there, the moral high ground. And, and, and if a few bad actors went in there and burnt some shit down and did some stupid crap, well, that's really that's what happens sometimes when you get a bunch of pissed off people together. And whether they were Trump supporters or not or Ill, irrelevant, they should have arrested them while they had them all in the Capitol instead of escorting them in, letting them put on this charade, and then escorting them out, and then putting up a bunch of photos saying the FBI is looking for these people. Oh, they were right fucking there just a day ago. And you let them leave. You let them walk out of the building. And now we need to find them. So... That does not diminish from the fact that we, the American voters, have a right to question this. And in doing so, if we get angry or we call news people bad names or we, we put up a stink, it does not take us off of the high road. So it's hard to get this rucked up nebulous thought in my screwed up brain out. But I think when you when you look back, uh, you know, one of the videos I was watching yesterday uh, by Mike Adams was saying that, you know, we need to explain to people, you know, what's going on. We need to tell them, you know, they need to be in the loop. And I was thinking about my friends over at the three percenters groups and stuff that, well, you know where three percenters comes from, right? The expression three percenters was three percent of the colonists in America back during the Revolutionary War were actually on board with it. The other 97 percent had no fucking clue what was going on. They're just like, whatever, you know, and then they, you know, you have a battle in their their front yard and their their farm and they're like, what's going on? And then they go, oh, okay, okay, fine. Good luck. Have fun storming the castle, boys. So, the 3% were the people that were awake and aware. The other 97% weren't in that loop. And yet it still happened. And we will look back on history and not too many history books other than until the last 50 years that when they're trying to erase everything would say that the founding fathers in the Revolutionary War was not taking the moral high ground. If you're fighting for freedom, if you're fighting for liberty and a government that is not oppressive or a monarchy like England, when you are fighting to defend your family or your right to live, to life, liberty, and happiness, then you are automatically on the fucking high road. And if your actions seem to upset a few people that you're in battle with, too bad. I'm sorry, but that does not mean that you are automatically off of the matter, you know, the moral high ground, and they are now on the moral high ground because you hurt their fucking feelings. So where does being on the high road lead us in today's world? Well, I think it leads us into serfdom. If we continue to play the game by their rules, set up by newspeak and, and, and bullshit. You know, I 
feel that if a group is to get pissed off enough to go to the Capitol, a million people, and start screaming and yelling and calling names, still leaves them on the high road. When they start breaking in and screwing shit up, that group might need to be arrested and figured out. But that does not diminish the whole argument and say that we have lost the high ground. Because what the news will say is, well, we're not that kind of people. All, all of the, the, the rhinos and the pseudo uh, you know, conservatives, well, we're not that way. We're not that kind of people. Well, I don't really know what kind of person you are, Mitt Romney, but you can go pound fucking sand. You're rich, for one. I am not rich, so I guess we are not your kind of people. But don't tell me how we, the people, are. Don't tell me we, the people, are not that way. Because, see, we elected you to do what we think, and therefore you are that way because we say you are. And if you sit there and get on national TV and tell me we're not that way, you should get fired. But we don't do that in America. You know why? Because we elected these fucking asshats. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? You know, it, 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 it shocks me to, to, to see what we will put up with as the people that are in charge. You know, we hired a property management company 240 years ago called the federal government. And its purpose was to defend the borders. What borders? The borders around our property. Borrow money to buy more property, like the Louisiana Purchase and, you know, and Texas. And there was, like, you know, 10, 15 agreements that we entered into and bought land that gives us the United States as it sets right now. We bought it. Cha-ching. So we set up a property management company. And the federal government's sole job was to protect that, to write enabling acts, to, to make things right for, for the people that they were to represent and control all this land, the dirt, and divide it up into states and then let the states run it. And eventually the, the, the authority of the property management company would become very little. Um, the president can write treaties that, that govern the states with other countries, kind of like the Commerce Act. You know, it's like, well, if one state can't charge another state more money for goods to travel across it like a tariff because you don't like them. See, that the property management company says, no, you can't do that. We're all in this together. Let's play nice. Um, and then also to write treaties that protect our playground and all the sandboxes, all 50 sandboxes in our playground. And so that's the president's job. And then the, the representative's jobs was to represent the states and the people. So we elect Bob to be the representative. The House represents we the people. That's why we elect them. The states elect the president because the president represents the states in treaties and foreign affairs, wars and shit like that. Because when, when people want to go to war with us, what they're saying is, we want to come and take your property. And the property management company steps in and goes, whoa, wait a tick. Now, as far as, well, then you're thinking to yourself, well, Mark, who manages the people? Oh, my God. You just can't have 300 million people not being controlled. Well, if you think that way, then you are a control freak. And so the states and the representatives represent the people. And the people get together and go, yes, no, no, yes. Go tell Washington, that's our decision. Do it. So let it be written. So let it be done. And it was done. As far as the people running around without any control from the control freaks in D.C., that was done through laws. We were a nation of laws, rules that were kind of nuisance rules. 
like we've become a permission-based society. If you don't know what that is, I've done videos and YouTube's on it and stuff. But basically, you have to ask permission to, to wipe your butt and they will tell you what kind of toilet paper you can use. That's a permission-based society. We were a nuisance-based society before that. So like if me, one of the 300 million uncontrolled radicals running around scaring people, um, if I did something that, endangered my neighbor over there or over there. Um, they could call in a sheriff or a deputy or the marshal, or the police, whatever it was back then and today. And that law enforcement dude or dudette would show up and go, what are you doing? And I go, well, I'm burning tires. It's like, why the fuck are you doing that? First, all was because I wanted to. Well, the smoke is going in your neighbor's yard, and his children have asthma, and and you need to put that out. You're being a nuisance. What you're doing with your factory is polluting the water, and you're being a nuisance to everybody. And then that would be looked at in court and you could fight it and maybe you'd win, maybe you'd lose. But now we have overreaching government from the federal level. This is a property management company. We're, pro we're, we're watching your property. Oh, really? So you're telling us we can't log, we can't mine, we can't do oil exploration, we can't do whatever our state is, we can't mine for copper, oil, gold, gas, natural gas, methane, whatever. So the property management has become overbearing and, and they need to be put in their place and that's why I bring up Bundy's because he did a really good job of, of staying on the moral high ground and yet telling them to go pound sand. Were they pissed? Sure they were. <laughs> well, Harry Reid was in charge of Nevada at the time so that kind of gives you an inkling of what they were thinking on a on a state you know government level you know it's like you can't do that. Well, yeah we kind of can and we are so it, it didn't go you know fisticuffs you know i guess we could say fisticuffs and <laughs> firing pen to primer but uh it got heated the news tried to paint it one way and if it weren't for the thousands of people that supported the bundies and actually showed up there visual people like mom and dad and you're like holy fuck i know that guy it would have gotten out of hand. A lot of people would have been just mass arrested in the Bundy family. And if anybody shot anything, everyone would have died because there weren't enough witnesses there to, to stand on that high road with the Bundys and go, no, 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 no. And, 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 and the news, all they could do, they could spin it all they wanted, but there's still eyeballs watching that going, I know that person. All right, so I guess the big question then of the day is how, how do we rectify whether we're on the high road and if we have the high ground or not? And, and uh, I might have talked about this a little bit. I had some video issues with my phone. But I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that the founders back in the days of the Revolutionary War when we kicked England's ass. I would say that they were fighting for their families and their freedom and their liberty and, and what they believed in. They believed that the king was being tyrannical and uh, taxing them without representation. And, and a lot more than just the, uh, the talking points. I mean, they were basically kind of oppressed and the king of England throughout the centuries has never really been that great of a group. And that's why we had many constitutions before, because the people in England would rise up and kill the king. And then they would create a new constitution and then 100 or 200 years would go by and then they would rise up and kill the king again. So if we're pissed about things in America... And we choose to become violent, which 
I would highly recommend not doing. But if that's the only alternative, just like the King of England um, left the colonists no other option, then I would say that they still had the high road. They were doing the right thing. They were doing what they believed that they should be doing. And so I, th I think we sometimes get caught up in, in the, the news cycle and the minutiae of the, the semantics and the news speak. And they tell us that we do not have the high road, that we're not that way. We shouldn't be that way. We should relax and not be douchebags. And to that I say bullshit. I call bullshit. If we're doing it for the right reasons, to restore the Constitutional Republic as written, and I've talked about this before, you know, yeah, could we restore the Constitution and <clears throat> leave out the whole slavery thing? And, and sure, we could. We could leave the 14th Amendment in there and the, and the ones dealing with slavery and all that. And, and then that way it would have been as if the abolitionists back in the 1700s had gotten their way. They had chose a different path because they knew they couldn't get the Constitution ratified if they, if they went monkeying around with that. But now that we are on the verge of collapse as far as a constitutional republic, I think if we went back to the original document and <clears throat> took out a lot of the mindless shit that's been added and went back to where we had all the rights and the government was very limited, um, then I think we'd be far better off because we'd be starting from a, a point with perspective. We'd be saying, well, well we're not going to go back to the original document and take out all of the amendments, we're just going to leave in some of them dealing with slavery and some stuff, but we're going to do away with the taxation and stuff like that that's oppressive and not constitutional. Then I think we would safely be able to say that we are on the high road. We have the high ground. So we need to, th to think about it that way. And, and if and if we can get our head around it and we can realize that if we're doing the right thing and we're doing it for the morally right reasons, then we can continue to stand on the high ground and say, no, we're not that kind of people that you're portraying us to be, but we are this kind of people. So I've had five phone calls that's interrupted this uh, podcast. So I just want to apologize if it gets a little choppy in there and it doesn't segue from <clears throat> point to point, not that I'm very good at ever doing that anyway, so I'm sure you won't even notice, but I just wanted to let that uh, let you know that as I wrap up here. Um, hopefully I got the key points, and the main thing I, I wanted to really bring out is, <clears throat> you know, don't let the enemy, our enemy, whether it be the mainstream media or our bullshit politicians that are asshats, dictate the terms of the argument and whether we are taking the high road or not. It's not up to them. We are the American people. We have <clears throat> created the federal government. And if we understood totally, you know, if we were being educated properly by all the systems we put in place and paid taxes for for a hundred years, like schools and stuff, we might understand and have better politicians, but we, we don't. So, the reality is that this is our ball game and we create the rules and we determine who scores a goal and who doesn't. It's, it's, it's all us. And that's why I kind of started out by explaining some of the, the actual realities of, of who's in charge and who set up the federal government and, and who runs it. And that's us. So don't let the other people, I'm going to call them the enemy because I feel we are under attack from tyrants and and those tyrants are mainstream media big tech big pharma big brother 
federal government, and they've all lost their way and have been lying to us for so many years that I've, I've talked to people on Facebook that think that the incorporation doctrine was a suicide pact, and now all states must follow in line and lockstep with the federal government when that's it cannot be true because we created the federal government to benefit us, we the people. So an incorporation doctrine interpreted the way they're telling me it's supposed to be interpreted would be irrelevant in, in, in the conversation of why do we even have a federal government and a constitution? Because now it's all just dictated by the king of America. So we've, we've come a long ways and we've learned a lot of things about the nature of humans. And, and we see, as the founder said, that if, if men were angels, there would be no need for government run by men because we would all be doing the right things. But since we're not all angels and we're not all that smart, we created a government to protect us. And that was us, meaning our property, our dirt, the borders within, the, you know, around the United States of America, and to oversee that, not to become the overlords of it and to tell us what we can and cannot plant in our own yard or whether we can mine our own minerals or we can drill water on our own property or we can extract oil from our own state so we've allowed it to slip <clears throat> and i think when we when we really determine to get it back um, and it becomes maybe a revolution or a civil war um, we need to know that we are standing on the moral high ground and, and if we can only get educated, then we will truly be on the high road and, and because we won't be doing things wrong. But I see a lot of people asking the government to fix these problems in the wrong way. And, and that's why it, it, it's so aggravating for people to say, well, this election fraud, you know, we need the government to fix it. Well, the government can't fix a problem that should have never existed because we didn't elect our president as citizens, but now we do. So um, you can't just talk about that because it opens up a whole bunch of can of worms talking about a thousand other things like do we elect our senators? Should we elect our senators? Why do, why do we let gerrymandering wreck our, our representation and take it from us? So to remain on the high road is going to be difficult if, if patriots and, and, and and freedom-loving Americans don't understand the reality of the fight that we are going to be in soon. You know, we, we can't let states kowtow to a federal government that the states created. That's like um, parents kowtowing to the children that they birthed. You know, we give them an allowance and that's that. And for them to sit there and tell us, well, you know what, when I'm 15, I will drive your car. Um, as a parent, that would almost be laughable. But when you look at a constitution in the United States, we, the states, are the parents, you know, basically. And, and, and so for the federal government, the child to say, well, now I want you to buy me a car and let me drive at 14. And if you don't, you will be in trouble. You know, um, I'm sorry it doesn't work that way. It may seem logical in that it should work that way because they have all the, their money and they withhold it from us, but that shouldn't have happened either. And therefore it happened because we didn't have representation, which shouldn't have happened either because we have senators that are elected for six years and shouldn't have happened either. So you see, to keep this moral high ground that we all want, uh, it's going to be tough. And so... I'm not asking everyone to get a, a degree, you know, at a, at a constitutional college like Harvard or Yale because you're not going to get a real degree anyway. But, you know, you can go to Hillsdale and some of these places and learn some shit. But even then, they've brought some slants with them also. So where do you find this alleged high ground? We know what the Constitution was written like, just like we know the Bible. And you can sit there and let people preach the Bible to you all day long. But if you've read it and you understand it and you have a relationship with God, then you're probably on the right page. So it's the same thing with the Constitution, only that the Constitution is about 180,000 words less 
than the Bible or whatever it is, because the Constitution has 3,300 words thereabouts. So it, it's not that hard to understand. It's written in the same tone and language and text as the King James Version, and people can understand that. So don't don't play stupid. You know, read some things, understand them. Use your head. Don't ask somebody on Facebook or Google to explain it to you. Use your head. And, and, and then listen to people like Chris Ann Hall and the Tenth Amendment Center and Sheriff Mack to learn the real ways, because the real ways that we should be running this country run diametrically opposed and contrary to what we've been told for our entire life. Running out of power, so I'm going to wrap it up. Learn some shit. Get your learn on. Love you all. Talk to you later. Enjoy the apocalypse and the Civil War. Bye-bye. We've made too many compromises already. Too many retreats. They invade our space, and we fall back. I'm your huckleberry. The line must be drawn here. This far, no further. That's just my game.